let's get started. One quick note, you know, I was trained uh, on GAT systems by Mark Plinke, who's our founder and GAT system guru. And, you know, he's such an amazing guy, brilliant, and he's taught me so much, and I really hope that I can, um, I can teach you guys a little bit of what, what I've learned from him. So, first let's talk a little bit about what a GAT system is. Um, GAT is not just a word. It's an acronym that stands for Ground to Air Heat Transfer System. The GAT system is a renewable heating and cooling system that utilizes the thermal mass of the soil or earth. It's a type of uh, ground to air heat exchanger, AKA a ground coupled heat exchanger. It's also a climate battery used to keep day and nighttime temperature fluctuation within a greenhouse to a minimum. While a GAT system is a geothermal system in that it uses the consistent temperature of the earth to heat and cool, it is not a traditional geothermal heat pump system, which, which requires a refrigeration cycle. Um, geothermal heat pumps um, when people use the term geothermal, they're generally referring to a geothermal heat pump. Um, and these are definitely more expensive and larger in scale, and they're not a GAT system. I'd like to tell you a little bit about why a GAT system works. First of all, heat generated inside of the greenhouse during the day um, can get really hot. You know, we've measured temperatures up to 180 degrees, um, and that equals a lot of BTUs of energy that are available to use. Um, the GAT system, basically we use a GAT fan to, to pull that heat under the soil into the huge storage capacity or thermal mass of the soil, allowing it to act like a large battery. And because of the physics of energy transfer, hot and moist air is drawn underground into the soil, it's cooled, water vapor is forced to condense, and it's during this phase change, it's this phase change that drives the transfer of heat. Let's look at how the GAT system works. Our GAT systems work both in day and night times. Um, if we look at the, the little image here on the right, this is the typical GAT action um, during the daytime or in the summer, where you can, if you look at this image, that right, or that, I'm sorry, the red pipe in the back, which is, which is at the north side of this greenhouse, that is the inlet pipe. It's positioned, in, positioned high in the greenhouse, that it can pull hot air down underground into the main manifold, and then air is transferred uh, across smaller diameter pipe to the return manifold, where it's, where it's cooled using the soil, and that heat is stored in the soil. As I mentioned previously, this, this action of cooling the hot air that condenses into water, it also dehumidifies the air that comes out, cooler and less humid. Um, and this whole process adds to circulation within the greenhouse. At nighttime, it works the same, except instead of pulling hot air underground, it's bringing cool air, air that if the greenhouse temperature flows below the thermostat point, um, in this case around 50 degrees, the GAT fan will pull that cool air underground into that consistent uh, temperature of the earth that is not only uh, at the ground temperature, but it's also been warmed during the day by, the, by pulling hot greenhouse air underneath. So therefore, you're able to warm air uh, the air is warmed as it comes out into the greenhouse. Let's talk a little bit about the components that make up the GAT system. Um, and these components are based on the size of the system. We generally use two different sizes. We use a small GAT size or residential system. And these generally uh, just residential greenhouses that require less heating and cooling than a large um, commercial greenhouse. Uh, these utilize smaller diameter pipes, smaller fans, and are typically consist of two layers of pipe, uh, generally at two feet and four feet below grade. This image that we saw on the first slide is the large GAT system um, or commercial system that uh, demands more heating and cooling capacity utilizes larger diameter pipe and much larger fans. Um, and you can see that the design of these systems is a little bit different. So to follow up, 
um, you know, commercial and residential. Residential systems are smaller, require less scat system energy, therefore lower air, air flow that's manifested in smaller diameter pipes and smaller fans. Um, these systems are generally easier to design and are fairly adaptable to different sizes of greenhouse with subtle tweaks. Commercial greenhouses, however, or GAT systems, however, require larger GAT systems. Um, they require more GAT system energy, um, that's m equals to more airflow, larger pipe diameter, larger fan. Um, and these are pretty fun to design for us because they a lot of times require pretty um, creative problem solving um, because they're larger systems, larger components, tougher mounting, et cetera, and a lot of times uh, narrower thresholds in temperature uh, stability. So the first component I want to look at is not connected to the GAT system. It's not an actual pipe component or fan component. It's the insulation that we use to surround the GAT system. Um, it's important to insulate around this thermal battery so that heat doesn't escape during the day or night. Um, there's two applications that we commonly use with insulation. We either use a, on the left, you can see vertical application of two two-inch thick pieces of polyiso rigid board insulation. Um, Typically, we use this uh, during normal excavation. If somebody digs out a hole for a greenhouse, and we will just line the foundation with, with this board. Um, on the right, you can see what's called the Swedish skirt method. And in times when we can't dig deep enough, or we have an existing greenhouse and we still want to insulate around it, but we can't dig you know, inside or right next to all the way down to four feet, we'll use this uh, this. Uh, Swedish skirt method, and it still works really well in order to keep uh, you know, keep heat inside that thermal battery. Insulation is very important and often overlooked uh, component of that system. Let's take a look at some of the pipe components that we use. Um, for a residential system, uh, generally they consist of six inch underground pipe and four inch um, feeder pipe. You can see here on the left that um, we use uh, splitters or Ys that go from the manifold into the four inch uh, diameter pipe, um, connectors that are perforated and sleeved, um, and we do reduce down from six inch to four inch line. On the right side here is a picture of two assembled uh, GAT systems. Um, one of these will go at four feet below grade and one at two feet below grade. You can see on the end here, this pipe is a non-perforated pipe. Um, and that is the that is the component that uh, connects to the above ground. It's what goes from underground to above ground. There's no elbow on there. We're able to just bend it up. We like to reduce bends in our systems because it helps airflow better. And you'll notice that right here, this would be um, another, it's not installed yet, but this would have another six foot um, non-perforated pup coming up out of the ground. And in the next few pages, it might show a little better, but you can see that if we call this the supply at the four foot layer, this would be the supply at the two foot layer. We mirror our systems on top of each other. And I will show that a little bit more clearly right here. So you can see here we have our excavated hole, excavated down to four feet. We've used um, insulation around the perimeter. We've assembled a full system of pipes with, this would be, your, this is the, would be the south side of the greenhouse, away from the, of the, of the, um, the house, and against the house would be the north wall. So this pipe that's coming down out of the ground would be an exhaust. All of the inlet pipes um, we put on the north wall of a shed roof greenhouse. Um, so this would be your, your return or your exhaust coming out, perforated pipe coming down to here. All this is four inch perforated and sleeved pipe. And then out of the picture on this side would be where the inlet would come up and out, another six foot pipe that would connect above ground. You can see in this image right here, we have backfilled with two feet up to the two foot below grade layer and added the second uh, residential system right on top of, of the first. You can see the outlet here, outlet here, inlet pipe would be back here, and then another inlet pipe here. And here's a photo of backfilling over that second layer of system. And then, of course, this last photo is the is is a different system, a different greenhouse. But this one is showing the greenhouse grade um, gas systems backfilled. You've got pipes coming out, inlet, outlet, inlet, outlet, right here on the side of the screen. 
that then is ready to, once the greenhouse build, it's ready to mount the fan in the above components. Um, to move on to the commercial components, you can see just from this photo that these components are quite a bit beefier than the, um, than the other components, than the residential. Uh, this consists, I'm thinking this is about 24 inch diameter, um, fairly rigid pipe um, that you can't bend. You need to use couplers and elbows to connect it into the system. In this image on the far right, you can see how we hype, type or hook into our multiple layers. We're still using a four inch perforated pipe um, and generally shown in multiple layers. Right here is an example of um, a commercial GAT system that is current that is being installed. Um, you can see the large uh, diameter pipe against the back wall there. Um, elbow coming up, which will be the inlet. And then you can see an end cap right here. It's a little bit different of a system configuration. We drill holes to accommodate multiple layers of four inch pipe. Here is one layer of four inch pipe that will then be back backfilled to right below the next layer. Pipe will be inserted then and then we'll backfill to the next layer until we're completely underground. This system is likely down to four feet below grade, and fill will uh, be all the way up to the top of the, um, to the, to whatever the greenhouse grade is up here. Let's talk about the heart and soul of the GAT system. You know, the pipe is super important because that is where the air has direct contact to the earth and where all the heat exchange takes place. GAT fans, however, are what drives that heat exchange because it's pulling air down into the soil. And GAT power, or CFM, is what is dictating the power of the, of the GAT system in general and the capacity it has to heat and cool. Uh, for our residential systems, we're generally using six inch inline fans. Um, these fans are rated at 530 CFM. Um, their actual CFM tends to be a little bit lower due to um, resistance within the pipe. You can see on the left here that we have um, we've connected to the below ground pipe with PVC, and that is connected to the gap fan, which are out of head um, head knocker area. I call it. Um, oftentimes we mount fans lower as well. It kind of depends on the design of the greenhouse. This client was going to utilize that back wall wall quite a bit, so we wanted to lift the fan. You can see the above the fan is where the inlets are, where the actual air is pulled down by the um, GAT fan. And we tend to put these up high in the greenhouse. And as we've continued to design these systems, we've realized that though it's good to have them up high in the greenhouse, you don't have to have them all the way up to the apex of the greenhouse, because that's where the most hot air is going to reside. It's OK to pull air from a little lower than the apex, because um, generally the hot, the cooler the air that you put down in the greenhouse, the easier it is to cool while it's under the ground. So there's a sensitive balance in there and sometimes requires a little bit of tweaking and performance um, um, watching, I guess is the word. On the right here, you can see um, a typical, the way we wire our thermostats and our fans. Generally, we have thermostats that are hardwired wired to an outlet and, um, and those are connected to the fan. So, at the, well, let me touch a little bit on the commercial fans quickly here, just to show you the size difference. This right here is a 24, these guys right here, 24 inch diameter fans rated at, I think somewhere close to 5,000 CFM. I need to double check that, but much greater power than the smaller systems. This is a much larger greenhouse, however. You can see the different complications in mounting the fans due to their, how heavy they are and other variables. Um, and over here to the right is just showing another method of connecting the um, inlets or a different style of inlet pipe that you can use. Um, you've got your rigid pipe coming up out of the ground here. And then because they wanted to get it up towards the top of this gable, um, they used a flex pipe that's a little more beautiful, and a little more aesthetic, and um, kind of easier to manipulate. I mentioned thermo thermostats. Typically, our GAT systems uh, require two thermostats. One for heating, that's, that's commonly set at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and one for cooling that's commonly set at 75. You can see this image here of, that I, I kind of briefly described it. This one here has three thermostats, and the reason for that is the third is controlling an exhaust fan that is not part of the GAT system. Um, but everything is hardwired 
together. And just to explain the thermostat action a little bit more in depth, um, the GAT turns on during cooling mode. The GAT the cooling thermostats activates the fan when indoor temperatures cross a high threshold, like su such as 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature can be adjusted due to the specific requirements of your greenhouse. The GAT will turn off when the greenhouse temperature falls between 75 and 50 degrees. And then we'll turn back on to heat when the thermostat falls below uh, the, thresh, the set threshold, in this case 50 degrees, which can be adjusted. Go back really quick here before I tackle some of the most common questions that we get about our systems. Um, in my opinion, GAT system is much more than the sum of all these components. Um, at Ceres, we've been designing GAT systems for quite a while and have kind of mastered the concept of using minimal electric requirements and power requirements to gain the maximum benefit, heating and cooling benefit of the GAT system. Um, we very much encourage our clients to put together their own DIY systems, but just remember that if you need help with your system, we are happy to, um, to design for you. We do this. I design a few GATs every week to people all over the country and even internationally as well. Um, our GAT designs come with schematic drawings, they come with a materials and pricing list, and full installation instructions. Um, and we find that commonly our clients uh, have a pretty easy time putting these systems together. They're very simple. And part of you know being able to put them together themselves is being able to understand the concepts, and that's part of what this webinar is all about. So I talk to clients on a daily basis about their specific greenhouse needs, and I found that there's a lot of frequent questions that come up. Um, and I thought that a good way to talk about these systems would be to um, would be to just kind of go over some of these basic questions. The first is how deep do you bury the pipe? And I've, I've touched on this already. Um, the majority of our systems we bury at four feet. And residential will have a layer at two and four feet. The commercial systems will um, let, most of the time we set the, um, the manifold, the large diameter pipe at four feet, and then evenly place the um, smaller diameter pipe um, in, this, in, the, in the soil below. Um, ideally, we'd go down about 12 feet to where we can really get that consistent um, temperature of the earth. But we found that um, due to typical foundation depths for greenhouses and economy of excavation, um, four feet is a sufficient level. Soil temperatures will, not only sufficient but high performing, um, soil temperatures will vary depending on where you're at. So that's part of a factor that we take into place when we're designing GAT systems. Um, and commonly, another very common question we get is, um, what about my water table? Um, I have, some people have a higher than four feet water, feet water table, sometimes up around two feet, and systems need to be modified because when the water, when the pipe fills up with water, it doesn't work. No air is allowed to flow through. Um, and as I mentioned previously, we do use perforated pipe, and if the water table does rise, our forage pipe can, um, or all the perforated pipe can take on water, and then the system is designed to then, when the water table recedes due to seasonal um, fluctuations, snow melt, rain, et cetera, um, water can drain out of the pipe at no harm. Um, ideally, we like to keep the bigger diameter manifolds out of the water. Um, one instance that a recent design that I've done is a client with a essentially a river running through their greenhouse, an underground river they didn't know was there. Um, so we kept tweaking the GAT system to make sure that it was at the right level. And the solution we ended up coming with was we used a large, um, large diameter pipe, and we actually set that at two feet, so that would never fill up with water. And then we allow the four inch pipes to slink down below that level so that um, seasonally water table, the water table could rise, fill the pipes, and the gap wouldn't work. And it was typically in the, in the early spring, or, or sorry, late spring. And then once that water table receded, the pipes would drain. And we think that that's going to work, work really well for this particular application. As I mentioned, soil temperatures vary with climate. And this web, this um, link right here, NRCS soil climate analysis, can be a good um, 
can be a good source to figure out what your soil temperatures are. Um, the next question we get is how much heating and cooling does a gas system provide? And this really depends on where you're at. Um, it depends on the temperature gradient um, of the inside of the greenhouse on the ground, um, which is controlled by the climate. Um, also, another uh, variable is fan power and is the size and shape of your greenhouse. So for more specific questions on that, we would have to look into each everybody's um, individual system. Um, but I do want to just take a quick look at this graph. This is one of our most important graphs that we look at. And it just explains um, kind of how the GATT system is working in relation to temperature inside of the greenhouse. And this, this little study was done um, with thermocouplers um, at, in Evergreen, Colorado in March in the springtime. And really the two, there's three, there's GATT outlet temp, the blue, the red is inside air temp, and the gray is outside air temp. Really the most important um, components to pay attention to are, let's just say you can disregard the outside air temp. Let's just focus on the red and the blue. And at 7 p.m., far to the left here, as the, as the inside of the greenhouse is, um, is cooling, whenever the GAT system is not on, the, GAT, the temperature of the outlet, because it's just a sensor that's sensing the air coming out of the outlet, it will tend to parallel the inside of the greenhouse air temperature. Um, you can see when this inside temperature falls below the thermostat point, this GAT outlet will, the GAT fan will kick on um, and it will begin to heat the greenhouse. It will begin to bring in warmer air. And you can see right here that as soon as that GAT turns on, this slow, subtle decline tapers off and then actually mm -hmm. continues to rise, which, is, which shows us that the GAT is working. As morning turns, as night turns to morning, and the sun starts shining and the greenhouse starts to subtly heat up, this GAT fan, the thermostat will recognize that, that the temperature inside the greenhouse is above the set temperature. And it will, it will turn the GAT fan off. When that happens, um, the greenhouse temperature will begin to rise and the GAT outlet temperature will parallel the, um, the inside temperature up to the point when the inside air temperature of the greenhouse exceeds the thermostat set point, then the GAT fan will kick on it will begin to pump in cooler air as it's pulling hotter from the greenhouse, bringing it underground, cooling it and exhausting it into the greenhouse. And you can see that as this happens, at a point when the GAT system starts to turn on, this inside temperature will start to plateau. It even dips a little bit. So we're able to keep a consistent temperature in the greenhouse until day turns to night, sun starts going down, heat uh, inside of the greenhouse cools, they, and it will cool to the point where the fan turns off and then we're back to the start. Another question is, does water collect in the pipes? And the answer to that is, no, it doesn't. Um, I mentioned um, two important facts in this presentation. The first is that um, as hot air is pulled underground, it cools, condenses, water is formed, and that water needs to go somewhere. Where we use perforated pipe for the six inch and four inch pipe um, in the GAT system. The only place we use non-perforated pipe is as the system connects with the with a pipe that connects from below ground to underground. And the reason we use that, the reason we do that is because generally with our two layers of GAT system, as that pipe comes up under from underground up, uh, to the above ground, we do not want our systems to mix in any way. And so we use non-perforated pipe where the at the inlets and outlets because we don't want to have any hair exchange between the two systems. We want them to work independently of one another. Um, and so that is why we use non-perforated pipe. Um, I guess they're following the same lines of just irrigation in the greenhouse. We're generally not worried about that flowing into the pipes because it will be minimal at best and any, anything that does um, flow into the gap pipe will, um, will drain out. Um, along with this question, we come and we get inquiries about mold, if there's any mold issues inside GAT systems. And we've measured this um, on a number of greenhouses and have found that there is a small amount of mold associated uh, with greenhouses and GAT systems. Um, but these amounts are not significant amount, uh, enough to um, cause any sort of alarm. Um, one of the most interesting um, pieces of information that we've received is that typically the mold on the intake of the GAT is generally more than the mold content on the exhaust of the GAT. 
And what that tells us is that the air that's pulled in the intake from the greenhouse, inherently because it's a, a greenhouse, will have a small amount of mold. As that air is brought through the gas system and is exhausted, a lower amount of mold is found than at the intake, which tells us that somehow the GAT system must be eliminating mold, probably just through airflow. And oftentimes associated with that question, I found people um, that live in high radon content areas or concentration areas are wondering if uh, the GAT system will bring radon into their, into their greenhouse. And we don't believe it does. Um, for a few reasons. The first is that these GAT pipes are under positive pressure. Um, they're, so radon is not allowed to actually enter into the system or the pipes. The other reason is that we use um, pretty strong exhaust systems, exhaust fan systems that are not associated with the GAT fan um, in our greenhouses. And greenhouses inherently are more leaky than, um, or I should say well ventilated than a, than a house. So typically we're not generally concerned about radon, concentra radon concentrations in a greenhouse. Um, and the third reason is that people aren't sleeping or spending significant times generally in their greenhouse. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are avid green thumbs out there, um, but typically I'm guessing that you spend more time in your house than you do in your greenhouse. So, um, this is a big one. Can the GAT system be off-grid? And the answer, short answer is it sure can. Um, it's going to add cost though. And Typically, it does not really make sense. If you already live, for customers that are already grid tied, um, it makes a lot more sense to pull power to your greenhouse. Our fans run on minimal uh, power, and it's just a lot easier and less expensive. Um, mm -hmm. If you do live off the grid, you can. If we do, do live off the grid, you can, um, you can run your system on photovoltaic. Um, it just does increase cost. And if you think about the days when it's sunny and nice out, it's going to work awesome. But on days when it's cool, cloudy, overcast, you're going to need battery backup to heat and cool your greenhouse. And that adds a significant amount of expense um, to your project. Another really common question is, what is the best uh, type of backfill material for the GAT system? And you know, we've gone back and forth with this a little bit um, between gravel and soil, but um, we think that soil is best, native soil, um, for, econ for economical or for efficiency and economic reasons. If you're backfilling and taking the soil out, you need to be able to, um, it's easier to be able to put it back in than if you have to uh, distribute it elsewhere or, um, and also more expensive to bring in additional soil. Um, commonly, our clients are using raised beds, so the quality of the backfill um, up to greenhouse grade isn't that important. If you are using, um, if you are going to be growing directly into the ground, then um, we recommend maybe backfilling. If you if you don't have that grade of soil, backfilling up to two feet and then filling the last two feet with like a really good high quality soil. Um, the exception to this is when um, the system is in, or oh, I'm sorry, when the when the existing soil is very um, clay, heavy clay, um, this type of soil does not conduct heat very well and therefore we recommend either mixing it with a crushed gravel or using the crushed gravel um, in place. You do have to be particularly, with all backfill, you have to be careful as you pile it on top of the gap pipes because you don't want it to lose, um, you don't want the connections to become dislodged. Um, but with gravel in particular, you want to be extra ginger because of it's, it's just a little rougher and, uh, yeah, and can dislodge pipe connections. How much does the system cost? Just a couple quick numbers here. So with one fan that, you know, I mentioned there, uh, this is a residential system. Uh, one fan rated at 530 CFMs, you're getting actual CFM somewhere around 400, depending on your elevation and the system design. Um, and that can contribute about 23 million BTUs a year into the soil. Um, the cost to run one of those fans a year is $30. And that's a savings of about you know, $900 off your electric power bill. So that's one fan. Typical residential system consists of two fans. Um, so your number is, um, you know, getting closer to approaching that $1,800 mark. Um, general cost of a two-fan system for materials, 
um, and insulation minus the cost of excavation is about $2,000. So you're looking at two to three year payoff period for a gap system. And cost is really important, but for those of you who um, are interested in efficient renewable systems, um, the peace of mind of going with the GAT system, overheating your greenhouse or cooling your greenhouse with with, um, with heaters and, and other methods, um, it can be pretty satisfying to use a GAT over those. Over those. Um, so that's just some general some general numbers there. So that concludes the um, presentation portion of this um, of this webinar. Um, I'd like to open it up to the audience um, to see if you guys have any have any questions, um, and if you're willing to go through the chat interface, I would love to try to answer some of your more specific questions or try to clarify anything that um, needs clarification. And as I understand it, um, each of you will be will have access to this presentation. Um, I believe an email will go out, uh, emailing it to you, and then I will be open to emails or uh, any calls or questions. Um, you can probably the easiest way to set up a call with me is to email me it, and let me go back to this initial page. It might help. At Bill at seriesgs.com. So there's no questions out there. Um, well, I guess that concludes for the day. Um, are you sure that you don't want me to go in more depth about uh, any of the GAT systems or GAT specific questions? I was kind of imagining that we would have an extensive question period, but it seems like that's not the case. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I can see all your questions now. Um, oh, good. OK, so this broadcast, uh, yes, it'll be recording after the event. We'll get that to you guys. Um, good, I'm glad you can hear me. Uh, from Michael, uh, can I grow cool weather crops and warm weather crops in the same GAT greenhouse? Yes, you can. Um, the exception is that you likely will not be able to grow those warm weather crops all year round. Um, in the winter, you know, typically, depending on your climate, uh, keeping a 50-degree greenhouse um, is, is kind of a good option. To, to heat uh, higher than that, you're going to need a supplemental heat source. Um, let's see here. Next question I see. Um, from Andrew, if I understand it correctly, the water that condenses in the underground pipe just gets absorbed by the soil fill. Is there any way to capture the water and reuse it in the greenhouse? That's a great question. Um, 
and one that we have not, uh, that I have not designed. And Andrew, I'm going to write that one down, and I'm going to uh, talk to Mark about that and get back to you because that um, that's a really cool uh, concept. Um, his other question is, what's the average electrical use of a per square foot of greenhouse? Um, well, generally, our, our two fans, um, our M6 fans are 120 volt fans, uh, 125 watt requirement. Um, so those will, I can get you some more detailed numbers and during the course of the year, what your actual electricity use will be. Um, it really depends on how much the system is going to run. Um, let's see here. Matthew, um, why not put insulation as a base layer two feet under the GAT layer? Um, we like to keep the GAT battery uh, as one solid unit. Do not like to separate um, the, the GAT systems. We also like to not close it off to the below ground uh, battery. Um, so, you know, typically we just insulate around the outside so we're not losing it to outside of the system. Uh, Andrew has another question. Do we use some kind of heat analysis software when designing the GAT system? We can do uh, specific energy analysis, um, and I can follow up with the uh, with that information for you. Um, typically, we'll charge a client a um, consulting fee to do a full climate analysis or uh, energy analysis of their greenhouse. Um, and really, you know, it, it really depends on a lot of times when we do those, we'll make recommendations like, how to increase insulation in your greenhouse, how to, you know, basically make changes that will make your greenhouse more efficient and therefore, um, and therefore um, make your system, make your whole greenhouse and gas system more efficient. Um, Matthew uh, asked, other than costs, why rounded gravel not always, uh, is not always better than dirt for backfill? Um, basically because of economy, we're pulling that, um, we're pulling that that soil out of the ground anyway, and it makes a lot more sense to put that back in. Um, if you do, what, one thing with gravel is that it drains really well, which can be handy, but also, as I believe I mentioned, moist soil conducts heat better, and gravel sometimes, uh, sometimes drains a little too well. Can you operate while it's below the water table? Um, let's see here. I'm guessing that you're saying when the water table, uh, when the gut pipes fill with water, when the water table increases, no, it won't run because air can't move through because the pipes will be filled with water because they're perforated. Oh, and looks like Aaron Mitchell missed the contact, contact info. So let's see here. I'm going to um, bill at seriesgs.com. Um, and if you email me, I'm happy to set up a call with you to discuss further. Would the use of water barrels in the buried portion help with climate battery? Good question. Um, I think it probably would. You're increasing the thermal mass underneath the ground. Um, you're also taking up area under the ground that otherwise gap pipe can go, and the more pipe you have, the more heat transfer. Um, so that's, that's kind of a cool question. Um, you know, typically people use water barrels inside a greenhouse to because of their thermal mass. Um, we tend to use we t tend to like to use a um, product called phase change material um, more than water barrels because they um, take up it takes up a lot less space and is actually four times more five times more efficient than than water barrels. But that's a that's a cool question, Henry. Let me let me look at that one and get back to you on that. But my my short answer is yes, it would help with thermal mass. No. It also takes away from the area that the pipe can become in contact with. Um, let's see here. Yeah, great. So, so, so Dan, um, and Dan, your name seems familiar. I wonder if I've, I believe I've maybe talked to you on the phone before. Um, so tubing is perforated not for airflow in and out of the tubing, but to allow a condensation to exit. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, typically, you get good heat exchange because of the pipe contact to the, the diameter of the pipe in contact with the soil. 
um, and the pipe generally is is uh, is perforated in order to allow that condensed air to um, to wick out. See, in a two-layer residential system, this is from Peter. Um, do the two layers of pipes communicate with each other, or are they totally separate? Uh, the two layers are completely separate. Um, I'm going to flip back to a slide here. Bear with me; these take just a minute. Um, well, I'll go back to the component system. I think that might show it the best. So you can see that these two systems, although this is not completely put together, um, they're completely isolated from one another. Each one is connected to a fan, and each one exhausts uh, to an outlet. So yeah, they're independent of each other. If your water table is high, do you just go as deep as you can? Any advantage of spreading out the pipe over a greater surface area if you can't go deeper? Um, yeah, there is an advantage as long as that is in an insulated area. As we get higher up, um, uh, you know, in the you know, if we go from four feet to two feet below grade, you're you're definitely you're essentially not tapping into that that high that greater thermal mass area underneath the ground or that consistent temperature that's generally deeper. Um, you can use more pipe, but that pipe it needs to be insulated either within the wall of the greenhouse or if it's an external system. I didn't mention this, but we can do retrofitted gas systems to to greenhouses on the outside of greenhouses. They need to be well insulated around the perimeter and also above um, above the system. Oh, hey, Michael. Um, how big should a photo photovoltaic system be to drive two? Uh, 650 CFM fans on an ongoing basis. This is for a 10 by 12 greenhouse. Um, if we go back to this, uh, one of the later slides, I believe that information is located there. Um, um, so let's see, uh, it can be powered by a uh, 600 watt PV system. Um, and this um, is the current cost of around $1,800, not including any sort of battery backup system. I'm designing a greenhouse in an area where the water table is very close to the ground level for six months. My plan is to build up using two layers of lockbox, about five foot, and then installing my system in sand above the existing ground level. Does this sound good? Yes. Um, so you're talking about inside your greenhouse. You're going to build it up. You're going to. You need to be sure to insulate around. Um, but yeah, I'm actually designing one of these right now, um, where um, it's a larger greenhouse, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to he has volcanic soil under the ground at about two feet, so we actually can't go deeper than that. So what we're going to do is build essentially a big insulated raised bed inside the greenhouse, and we're going to build the soil level up a few feet and then bury the system in there. So, yeah, that will work. Um, keep in mind that sand can work. Um, sand does not um, conduct heat as well as soil or gravel, but it, it very much, very well can work. Is in if the water table is three feet below and the lower layer of pipes is in the water. Yeah, I mean, my recommendation would be to just raise it up, uh, raise it up above the above the water table so they never fill up. But if you can't do that, um, it's fine to let them for part of the year to let them submerge in the water. But um, you know, it won't work at that point. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, insulate the um, system below grade. Um, we recommend, I believe, in, uh, the polyiso is our seven per inch, so we're using four inches of polyiso. Looks like I missed that question. Sorry, I wasn't seeing the chat box come through. I, 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 this is the first time I've done one of these webinars, and I understood the interface a little differently. There's Henry's cool question about the climate better again. Oh, there's a question from Mark Garner in the tropics. Mark, we've talked again before. Um, yeah, you know, in the tropics, I think, Mark, you're definitely going to want to dig a little bit deeper with your GAT system because um, you're generally going to have um, higher um, soil temperatures. Um, you know, I have not designed a GAT system in the tropics, um, so that would be a question that I will uh, want to defer over to uh, Mark Plinke. Um, in terms of environmental control systems, um, you know, essentially, you know, we use 
uh, fans, or I'm sorry, thermostats to, to do that sort of control. There are different web interfaces that you can use. And Norman, I can send you some links to some of those systems. Um, Byron, yeah, fans are always on the inlet side um, because the fans pull down. So we're wanting to pull the air down and then let it flow out the exhaust. Uh, Archer, any greenhouse designs available? Of course. Um, we have, if you go to our website, seriesgs.com, um, we have um, DIY kit greenhouses. We can also custom design greenhouses. Um, we have some larger, more commercial kit greenhouses as well. And um, yeah, please go to our website. I'd love to, or email me. I'd love to, love to talk to you about what we can offer in that regard. Do you have to know exactly the size of your greenhouse before you can offer a gas plan? You know, yes and no. We like to custom design our GAT, um, our GAT systems for the exact size of the greenhouse. Um, we can uh, generally knowing some rough dimensions, we can get pretty close. And then if you, in the end, if you, know, if you buy a system for us, um, in the end, um, if, you, if you change the, uh, the dimensions, you know, we'd be happy to adjust the, subtly adjust the um, GAT design for you. Um, no, you do not need a permit to install this. Um, as far as in putting in a greenhouse, it depends on where you live, but you will likely need a building permit for that, depending on the size. Aaron, how much efficiency can be gained in removing heat during this uh, in a hot, humid environment like the southeastern U.S.? Um, you know, the GAT system will generally work a little better in, in hot, arid uh, areas, but we can typically, um, you know, I, these numbers, I actually just, we just are designing a large commercial GAT system for a, a guy down in, I believe he's in Mississippi, and um, we believe that we can help to cool his greenhouse by about 5 to 10 degrees um, with our system. Is there any way to integrate a water battery to further stabilize air temps? Um, maybe water tanks buried at the same depth. Is there any way to increase? I guess this would probably um, fall under the same same question that Henry posed about the water barrels. And yeah, you know, again, I think it's very possible, um, but that would just help the, with the thermal mass of the soil. But again, you're taking up area for heat exchange, so. We might get into a much more of a kind of a, a more, I'd say, more non-traditional gap design to accommodate that. But that's a really cool question. Um, do you have any comments, designs regarding the actual greenhouse sitting atop the GAT system? Um, yeah. I mentioned that, um, you know, I would say that I'm, you can do an external GAT system. For somebody who has an existing greenhouse, we do this regularly. They, they can't get an excavator in to dig under. They want to do it. They have a, some open land next to their greenhouse, and they want to put the GAT system there. Um, yeah, not a problem. The, the number one requirement there is just making sure that you insulate around and above that greenhouse, um, and then also insulate the connections as it connects in, into the greenhouse. Um, you know, we... We do the majority of our GAT signs as, as below the greenhouse, um, at four feet below grade. And I would say that, that is, um, that's our most common design. But external GATs do work. Mark wants to grow strawberries in, in the Caribbean. Also, awesome. We should talk some more specifics. Um, it's been a while since we talked, and I think that's totally possible. Um, also wondering if we should try to exchange a certain volume of air um, per greenhouse volume. Yeah, I believe you're trying to get three air exchanges an hour, um, and we can work with that. Yeah, we do offer um, uh, ex or, uh, exhaust fan kits um, from 612 up to 24-inch exhaust fan kits. Um, uh, generally, put an exhaust fan in the east wall of the greenhouse and a vent in the west wall, and those kits also come with thermostats and uh, fan speed controllers. Um, Mark, what can we do if the water table is high? Well, yeah, you know, we just I just went over a couple of those options. One would be to build up um, above the water table, um, and um, you do have a high water table, so there's some more specific information that that um, you know digging into that needs to be used on this one. Can I use water from my stream? 
that flows in from our remote greenhouse site. Um, in order to irrigate, yeah, but I, you know, the water, this is an air system, and the water wouldn't really help you very much. Cleaning of the gas system, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I've never used, I've never done that. I think it'd be probably pretty difficult, just the way the, the amount of pipe that's underground, it'd be pretty tough to actually clean it out, and um, I haven't encountered that before. That's something I can look into for you. Oh, Josh, great comment. Soil holds moisture better than gravel. Yep, that's right. Water in the soil allows for better cooling. Yep, great points, Josh. How far north have you done an installation? Well, we've done, just did one in Alberta, um, but I believe we have some gats in Alaska that I did not design. There's Mark's strawberry question again. You know, Mike, we haven't um, installed phase change below ground. Um, we typically install that above ground. A lot of times on a north wall or high up, we can mount it to a roof. Uh, you just staple it right into the wall or screw it in, and it, it really works uh, like magic. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, send me an email, and we can send off a quote to you and give you some more information. There's also a good write-up on our website, um, seriesgs.com, um, uh, about the phase change. Uh, in eastern PA with dense clay soil, what would the ratio of soil to gravel use? Um, dense clay, yeah, you know, Michael, um, I'd want to look into that a little bit more um, and talk to you to, to hear about your soils. Um, but, um, yeah, I can help you work with that. In some cases, it might be worth going with all gravel, um, but we, it would depend on your specific um, soil. Does soil compaction affect the gut? I'm thinking aquaponics and fish tanks. Okay, typically, so this is a cool question. Um, and... You know, if we're digging down to four feet and we drop a, a layer in there, typically that layer is not going to be affected by soil compaction. Um, the backfill, when we backfill two feet above that, that soil is a little looser. We put a GAT system on there and then backfill up to two feet. That two foot layer is going to have, um, it's going to set a little bit more. So a lot of times we'll give it a little, a little extra wiggle and a little extra play in the um, inlet and outlet pipes so that they don't, pull out of the above ground components as they sink down, if that makes sense. Dan from U of MN, did the mold testing when I visited Mark back in uh, March, awesome. Uh, oh yeah, Dan, that's right, that's where your name's familiar. Um, feel free to chime in if you have anything else to gravel. Michael Hosking, what size gravel? We generally use uh, three quarter inch wash gravel. Matthew, for heating mode, wouldn't it be better to intake the cold air from a low height instead of near the ceiling. Um, that's, a good, that's a good point, Matthew. Um, you know, in an ideal world, I guess that inlet height would be adjustable, but um, we tend to um, put it up high because we like to store that heat in the ground that we're using. Uh, but that's, that's an interesting question. Where does the PCM go, in a back wall of greenhouse or in ground, say between pipe levels? A uh, PCM goes in the, uh, mounted to the inside of the greenhouse. Steve says thanks, thank you, Steve. If power were to be turned off all winter, how long would it take for the system to thermally uh, equal, uh, equilibrate in the spring? Good question, a lot of people turn their greenhouses off in the winter. Um, you know, we'd have to look at your specific climate, but I don't think it would take too long. Do you do anything for bulk water drainage from inside the greenhouse? Say in case of overwatering or a burst pipe, where would the water go? Uh, the water would typically just drain. Um, yeah, we don't really do any, take any preventative measures uh, to deal with bulk water drainage. Uh, Teresa, does the excavated area have to be underneath the greenhouse? No, as I mentioned, you can, uh, mostly in the case of um, existing greenhouses where we're gonna add a GAT, you can um, excavate outside, put your greenhouse, or put your GAT system in the ground, as long as you insulate around the perimeter and above. Um, Steve, yeah, as I mentioned, we typically use, um, if you have to bring backfill material, is it better to use something like a one minus variable size material or consistent like gravel? Um, you know, I would recommend, um, God, it just really depends. You know, again, I recommend using soil, but um, I would say in that case, whatever is more readily available, keep in mind that soil will help hold moisture better 
Um, so maybe you want to go with a, a certain type of soil. Southern California, Marvin, uh, in LA, how deep would you recommend that you go? Um, I'd have to look at your soil temperatures, Marvin. Um, I think you'd be okay with two and four, with four feet below, but we might want to go deeper. But again, that might depend on um, um, water table. Um, any preference in greenhouse material, plastic or poly? In our greenhouses, we recommend a triple wall polycarbonate material. If you have any questions about that, we can, um, I can definitely assist you. Please shoot me an email. You gave two basic designs, one for commercial. Is one layout more efficient than the other? Um, that's a good question. I think for the smaller systems, the, the pipe layout we use is more efficient. And in the commercial with larger diameter pipe, that is more efficient. Um, it really depends on the capacity of your, of your system. Are separate parallel pipes preferred? Is there a disadvantage if you can use one long one? Yeah, there sure is. Um, we've had, we uh, have run into this a couple times where we kind of work with clients who DIY their own designs and uh, one in particular that I didn't, uh, that Mark Twinkie shared with me was a customer who uh, called up and complained that his fan was only getting like 100 CFM um, and as Mark dug into it he realized that the, the customer, uh, he put one large pipe underground and snaked it around and by the time the air got all the way through there was so much drag in there and resistance that the fan power was um, was way you know was was really reduced. What if you pass your intake flow across a water wall before you pass the underground, then let it condense out further? Any idea how much that would improve efficiency? Um, I think it would improve um, efficiency a lot because you are essentially like in the really hot summer. There is a point when that that underground heat will will really heat up a lot. And if you can cool the air that's going underneath, it has to cool less underground, and therefore you have a more efficient system. So that's a good call. Okay, what is the degree of heating and cooling capacity that you could expect in a four-season climate uh, like southern South Dakota? You know, Sandra, I'd have to, um, if you're interested to talk more, we can look more specifically into your climate. Um, offhand, I can't really uh, shoot you out that information. Um, how much clay percentage is too much? Uh, you know, generally heavy clay. Um, and so in terms of percentage, I'd have to look into into that for you. Um, and Archer, yeah, you sure can use um, the systems in aquaponics. We do it uh, frequently. So I guess we made it through all the questions there. Um, I really apologize for not seeing that chat window. Um, I was looking in the wrong spot there, but I'll know for next time. Um, please. Um, Feel free to call or email, um, or really email, and we can set up a call that, with any more questions or if you're interested in having us um, talk you know, more specifically about your greenhouse and the GAT system. Um, I love working with clients, and I really like hearing about all, everybody's different types of greenhouses. So um, with that, if there are no questions, I'm going to sign off. And um, hey, thank you so much. Um, Take care and have a great day.